We've introduced scatter plots as a way to visually depict the association between two variables, um, the correlation coefficient, which is a way to measure that relationship, again, if any exists. But one last thing to always keep in mind about this idea of correlations or associations is to always remember that an association or correlation does absolutely not imply causation. So just because our two variables have an association doesn't mean there's a cause and effect relationship, meaning one variable causes the other to occur. So determining that an association exists can often be the first step in some larger research project. Um, so you find that there's an association, then you can set up more of an experiment with controlled variables and try to determine if that relationship is actually cause and effect. But the association itself isn't enough to tell us that. Something else to keep in mind, though, is that the lack of a correlation or the lack of an association can also be informative. So think about an example like gun ownership. So gun ownership could be one variable, how many people in a certain area own a gun, and we can compare that to something like the amount of crime in that neighborhood, the amount of homicides in that neighborhood. So if we're considering gun ownership and crime, a positive correlation between gun ownership and crime would mean that as gun ownership increases, so does crime. <clears throat> if that is the case, there could be some sort of cause and effect relationship there, or there could be some other variable that's causing both of those to increase, both of those to change together. If we found that there was no association, well then that might suggest that gun ownership, so people owning their own firearms, has no impact on increasing or decreasing crime. So you're not necessarily safer whether or not people in your neighborhood own guns or don't own guns. That doesn't have any effect on it. Or the same idea with homicides. If we found that there is no association between the number of homicides and the amount of gun ownership in a given area, that would mean, again, people owning guns doesn't make anyone safer or not safer. It doesn't have any effect on that. If there is, again, a positive association, or maybe in this case, a negative association, so meaning as people own more guns, there are fewer homicides, then it's possible there's some cause and effect relationship that people are safer living in an area where they have guns, but again, doesn't prove that cause and effect relationship. So we just said, doesn't prove the cause and effect relationship, but what if we just assume for a moment that evidence of an association did imply causation. So what sort of implications would that have? So for instance, that would mean that in our first example, US spending on science, space, and technology would cause more people to commit suicide by hanging, strangling, or suffocating themselves. In this case, the amount that we spend on science, space, technology has a very strong positive correlation in this case, that correlation coefficient is 0 0.9921. But it doesn't really make any practical sense that the amount we spend on those areas has any effect on the number of people who commit suicide. If an association proved causation, then the number of people who drown in swimming pools each year would cause Nicolas Cage to appear in more films. This association isn't quite as strong but it's still closer to, closer to positive one than it is to zero. But again, doesn't really make sense that the number of people who drown in swimming pools has any effect on how many movies Nicolas Cage makes each year. We would have, again, if we're assuming association did imply causation, then the number of people who get divorced in Maine, their divorces per 1,000 people, as people get divorced in Maine, that's actually causing people to buy more margarine. 
and in this case, again, we've got a very strong correlation, 0 0.9926. So if it was proving a cause and effect relationship, then the more people who get divorced in Maine, the more margarine you would have to, as a result, buy. Or people dying by being strangled by their bed sheets would cause skiing facilities to make more money. Again, we've got a very strong positive linear associate association between these variables, but people dying accidentally in their beds probably has absolutely nothing to do with how much money are made by ski facilities, ski slopes, and things like that. So in each of these cases, we need to think about what lurking variables there might be. So lurking variables are the idea that there are other variables that control what's happening. Something else that's going on that affects both of these. So the fact that there's an association, it's just sort of an interesting thing to notice. Both of these variables increase together. But in each of these examples that we've just looked at, again, really just doesn't make practical sense that there's any cause and effect relationship. There's probably some other lurking variable that wasn't included in the study that is causing both of those things to change together or change in the opposite direction. So if you want to see some more of these kind of weird examples of associations, um, there's a website there you can take a look at. He's got the original data. Um, so you can take a look at other sort of unusual things you wouldn't expect to be associated. But we want to keep in mind always this idea of a lurking variable. What else could describe or be responsible for the change in both of those variables? what haven't we taken into consideration in the problem?